And of course, this is the episode where there's a big box. And as they're fighting, a chainsaw starts sawing its way out of the box. The crowd is chanting for Terry, but we're not calling him Terry. The announcers are referring to him as Chainsaw Charlie. He's got a stocking on his head with some baby powder. And Terry actually wrote about this in his book. He says, I got ready for my big debut on Raw that Monday night in December, and the plan was for me to come out of a box. Bruce Pritchard, one of the backstage guys, was describing to me what they wanted me to do. I said, that's it? You just want me to come out of the box? Well, yeah, he said, just come out of the box. Do you want to come out as anything? Before my brain could fully process the question, my lips blurted out, Chainsaw Charlie, get me a chainsaw so I can go out there. I can't explain it. It just popped in my head. They asked me what I wanted to wear and then got me some Levi jeans and a pair of suspenders. I already had a red shirt, so I kept that. And they got me women's pantyhose stockings and some baby powder to put on my head. All at my request. What an idiot. I guess I could have just gone out there without anything over my head, but I wouldn't have been Chainsaw Charlie with Terry Funk's head, would I? I had to be Chainsaw Charlie. What in the world is going on with Chainsaw Charlie? Do you remember this conversation about? Yeah, it definitely did not happen that day. (laughs) By any stretch of the imagination. Okay. Um, Talk talk to us. How did this come to be? Yeah, I called Terry and and I pitched Terry to do, you know, this thing with Cactus. Ask Terry Funk. Okay. And Terry said, you know, Pritchard, I've been in as, as Terry Funk and I've done this. But do you remember John Ayers? John Ayers was a football player. John Ayers was a very good friend of Terry Funk's. I believe he played for the Denver Broncos. They were very good friends. And John lost his life to cancer. And Terry wanted a way to remember John Ayers. And she said, when John and I were kids and we would go, go to the barber, and the, 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 the barber, he was a horrible barber, Bruce. By God, he would get in there, and it'd be like you take a goddamn chainsaw to your head. And your, your, your hair looked horrible. We cried. I don't want to go to Chainsaw Charlie because Chainsaw Charlie's going to screw my head up. Now, he tells me this story after. Now, this all comes after spending time with Terry in Japan on a bus with uh, Leatherface, uh, Corporal Kirshner, doing the Leatherface gimmick in Japan. And Terry told me then about, see that right there, Pritchard? God damn. Chainsaw Charlie. Brings that goddamn chainsaw to the ring the way they've got it. They've got a gimmick so there's no blade on it. You can't cut anything. You're not going to hurt anybody here. But goddamn, when you hit the thing and it's going and the sparks fly, it's amazing. Chainsaw Charlie. So now fast forward, whatever it is, six months or so. Now he's telling me the Chainsaw Charlie and John Ayer story all over again. And he wants to be Chainsaw Charlie. Well, I don't want to put Terry in a goddamn leather mask. So I was like, okay, well, what would that look like, Terry? Goddamn, I don't know. Maybe we'll get some goddamn put some fucking pantyhose on my head. I don't know. I just just she's chainsaw Charlie. He's crazy. The pants he wore were mine. Never got them back. Okay. I think the suspenders may have been mine, too. We might have gotten them. But the pants are mine. Those are my pants. I never got them back. (laughs) Terry, wherever you are, I know you're up there. Man, can you have somebody find my pants? I think they might still fit. But uh, gave my pants. And he went out and we did the whole thing as Chainsaw Charlie. Because, you know, Cornette had done the whole thing with, with Russo that, you know, if you... God damn, you come out of a box, you're over. So we had Terry come out of a box. It was a rib on a rib on a rib. But, so Terry is in the box. Got to get Terry out of the box. Don't want, I want the door just to open or anything silly like that. That would just be stupid. He's Terry Funk, man. So you get a chainsaw. And he chainsaws, cuts a hole out of the box and comes out, you know, through the hole that he himself cuts his Chainsaw Charlie. Now, we're going to keep that picture, flag that picture, because we're going to come back to that in a minute. 
So he has a real chainsaw that is in the in the thing with him. He uses the real chainsaw to cut through the box, to cut the hole in the box. Then he has a gimmick chainsaw that doesn't have blades on it that will cut. Okay, you know, because it's like a, you got the chain on there and it goes around, it's got the blades and that's what cuts. So he cuts the hole, puts the one chainsaw back, grabs the second chainsaw and comes through the thing, right? Okay, folks. What year is this again, Conrad? What year are we in right now? What year are we talking about? This is this is the very beginning of 1998. 1998. Weren't no goddamn electric vehicles and all that kind of bullshit. All right. We used gasoline and oil, petroleum. It's in the ground. We got it. So God damn it, we used gasoline and it was gasoline powered <laughs> chainsaw. Go back to that picture there, Dave Silva. You see that shit coming from the, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, which I highly suggest you do, subscribe and like. Give us a five-star rating, please. But if you can see the picture of a bunch of sparks coming out of the chainsaw. You know what else is coming out of the chainsaw when Terry holds it up high over his head? The very fuel that powers the chainsaw. That's right, gasoline. So you know what happens to gasoline when it sparks hit it? It's not good. It's not good. Shit catches on fire. It does. And as Terry is holding over his head, it is soaking him. His head, his arms, his clothes. My pants! With gasoline and kerosene. It was like a mixture, you know, you do to get in there and get it all right. And I got the guy going, oh, Brucey, uh, he's dripping gasoline everywhere, and he's hit that damn thing in the sparks. He's going to catch on fire. I said, well, yeah, that's gasoline flying all over. And I said, well, what the fuck are we doing? Why are we giving him a fucking basic? You, you've given him a bomb. We have given Terry a bomb. And he's up on the goddamn corner of the ring post making it spark and it's getting all over him and you can see like little things start to flame up and thank god it wasn't enough to completely catch him on fire but holy shit he came back reeking like he had just mowed the back fucking 40 and um chainsaw charlie was born my god pritcher they got the guy there's goddamn holes there's holes in the top of the goddamn gas tank what the fuck well, you put holes in there so it can breathe. Because most people don't hold the chainsaw. Matter of fact, oh, I, believe there, I believe there's a warning on the chainsaw. <laughs> do, not, do not hold chainsaw over your head when full of gasoline and kerosene. Yes. So, folks, another this is another pro tip, man. God, we are teaching today. Professor Pritchard, by God, and I'm teaching today because I'm here to tell you, don't do that. Don't do that. That's bad. Bad, Terry. Bad. And um, so was Harry. But he lived He lived through that part. 